Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in today's video we're going to be having a look at different ways to select elements using JavaScript. Okay, so um, as we can see here I've got five dot points and all of these right here um, they're different methods of uh, retrieving or selecting objects or sorry elements. Okay, so um, most of you are probably aware of the first three. So we have get element by ID we have a query selector and we have a query selector all. So I'm going to be covering those three, but I think the main part of today's video um, is going to be when we get down to uh, these bottom parts here with the get elements by class name and get elements by tag name. I think these two right here are probably going to be the most significant when it comes to uh, the behavior of how they work. Okay, so let's just let's just get right into um, the first one here uh, gets element by ID. So this is probably the more popular one or the most popular one, but as the name implies, um, this allows you to retrieve an element by the ID. So let's go inside the text editor right here. I've got the exact same HTML file open, so I might just zoom in real quick here. Okay, so as we can see here, currently uh, none of my elements have an ID. So let's go onto the H1 and add an ID of something like my heading okay so my heading okay so now we can quite simply inside the JavaScript make a new constant uh, called let's just call this one uh, Dom's heading okay so Dom being my name Dom's heading uh, equal to document dot gets element by ID then pass through here my heading just like this okay so all of this is also case sensitive for those of you who um, who I uh, don't know, but right here, essentially, we've selected the element with the ID of my heading. Quite straightforward. So now, if I was to console.log uh, DOM's heading, of course, we're going to see in the console um, DOM's heading. So I'll just save this right here and refresh, and as we can see inside the JavaScript console, we have uh, the h1 tag right there. So that's, that's working perfectly fine. Now, what if I was to pass in ID? which doesn't exist. For example, if I do my heading one, um, that obviously does not exist on the page. Therefore, if I refresh, we get null inside the console. So of course, you're going to have null when your ID doesn't exist. Now, one more important thing in regards to get element by ID is that you can only call this method on the document object. Okay, so you can only do document.getElementById with all of these ones right here, all of these, um, all of these other four ones, um, these can be uh, ran on actual elements themselves. Okay, so we're going to get to that shortly, but um, that is all for get element by ID. So moving on to query selector, um, this one allows you to select an element, so a single element, much like the get element by ID, but this one allows you to do so using a CSS selector. Okay, so for example, let's go back inside here now, and we're going to be selecting the same thing, the heading, this time using hash heading, and then inside here, uh, query selector, just like that. So now, right here, we've selected the heading, this time using a CSS selector with the hash to represent an ID, and that'll give us the exact same result, um, as long as I put this back to my heading. Let's save this and refresh, and we can see right here we get the same result. We've selected the heading. Now, what if I was to once again pass through one, for example? Um, this one is going to give us null also. Okay, now this becomes interesting because, of course, um, essentially it's going to select the first element which matches the selector. So, for example, if I want to choose the first list item, I can just pass through here a class of dots list dash item, much like I would do within CSS to style up this list item. Let's save this and refresh and we can see we get the first list item. Okay, because that of course, that of course is only going to give you one element right here. When it comes to selecting multiple elements through the CSS selector, you can do so using query selector all. Okay, so let's go back inside here. Um, we're going to make a new constant and make this one. Uh, let's just do list items. Okay, this will be equal to query selector then all. Okay, so query selector all is going to take in now uh, once again list item. So now if I was to log out the list items just like that, and I save this 
and refresh, we can see right here we get a node list of each one of our list items right here. So each, each element with the class of list item is present inside here and this node list is an array like object. So you can access your list items using array syntax. For example, I can say right here list items then at index 3 it's going to give me the fourth one right there. Okay, so that's quite straightforward. Now, uh, what I was mentioning earlier about the fact that uh, you can call uh, these four methods on an actual element itself um, is basically referring to this right here. So if I was to grab the list items at index 3, so of course referring to this one right here, I can then say dot query selector on this and I can say get me the, um, uh, get me the elements for code. Okay, so right here I've got a code tag, okay, so by calling this query selector on that, it is going to retrieve me the code element or the code tag inside this fourth list item. So now pressing enter here, we can see we get that code element right there. Okay, so that's what I mean when I say you can call these four methods on elements themselves as well as the document right here. So the reason why you may want to call um, the uh, the methods on the actual element itself uh, may be uh, so that you don't actually, uh, you know, you don't um, uh, select elements that are outside of scope or outside of your particular thing. You know, if you've got if you've got some sort of like section or heading or some sort of uh, you know container, you don't want other elements coming into it. You can simply call uh, this uh, this method on the parent if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so moving on to uh, the last two here: get elements by class name and get elements by tag name. So for these ones right here, uh, you can see in brackets here I've got live now. The reason why live is there is because once you select these elements, so you're going to get an array like structure similar to this right here. Once you select the elements, it is going to give you a live list of those elements. Okay, so right here, for example, we can see I've got the, um, the list items constant. So of course, if I was to say list items like this, I'm going to get the node list. Now, what if I was to go inside here? And I add a new list item inside the um, inside the actual inspector here. So I say li class of list dash item. Then I say um, decode for example. Okay, so if I do this right here, I've now added a new list item. Now, if I go back inside the console here, we can see that list items still contains our five items from before. That is what query selector gives you, okay? Or query selector all gives you. With the node list here, sorry, with the um, get elements by class name, this would update as we add a new element. So we're going to be seeing this right now. So let's go inside the text editor and we're going to be using the get elements by class name method. So let's go inside here. We're going to say instead of this, we're going to say get elements by class name. Then we're going to pass through here just the class name. We don't need the dot because the dot or the period was for um, the, uh, the CSS selector. When it comes to this, you can just pass through the class name. So now saving this and refreshing, we get right here a similar result. This one is an HTML collection, which means it's going to be live. So. Let's do the exact same thing where we uh, add the element right here. Edit this and add a new ally tag. Pass through decode, press enter and now upon going back to the console, if I once again log out our list items, we can see, uh, you know what, let's go back and figure out why that didn't work. Um, let's go inside here. So of course we need the class. So class list item. Okay, because of course we're selecting uh, we're selecting by class name. Therefore, we need we need to pass that class in right there. So let's go back inside here and log out once again. This time we get six. Okay, so it's included our top one right there, and that is one of the key differences between selecting your elements through query selector all and get elements by class name. Okay. Um, 
just keep that in mind. So once you select your elements, you probably don't want to continue selecting them. Okay, now, of course, in a similar situation, if I was to go inside here and I actually remove all of my elements from this list right here, so if I say ally and just get rid of all of these list items, okay, and then try it again, we're going to get right here um, an empty HTML collection. So that is what I mean by it's a live uh, collection. Okay, now the very last one here, get elements by tag name is going to, of course, retrieve your elements by the tag name as the name implies. So this one is going to also give you a live HTML collection. So it's going to work in the exact same way. If I was to go back inside here and make this instead of an ally or list item, I'll make this an li, this time of course selecting by the tag name, save this and refresh. We can see right here we get of course an empty collection. Let's figure out why. Um, this needs to be get elements by tag name. Let's try it again and refresh and we see right here we get of course um, the exact same result and of course if I was to add the element right here it is going to then uh, you know be live and of course appear inside here once I log it out again. Okay so um, that right there is selecting your elements using uh, JavaScript. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.